Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War resource of diamonds. They are within the calendar this week, so I figured I'd go over them as they are relatively easy to waste. So diamonds are the resource that you can use within Gems of War, basically to craft any of the light game troops, particularly legends and mythics. Uh, you end up unlocking the Soul Forge after completion of the Blighted Lands Kingdom, and then after the Drifting Sands Kingdom, you unlock Dungeons. Dungeons is what you use mainly to accumulate diamonds. As far as diamonds, there are several ways to obtain them, all of which are very, very slow methods over time. There's no way to really rush up the accumulation of diamonds. Uh, one of the first ones is in your guild. You will have tasks, and at around the 10th task for each one of the six tasks that you would have here prior to getting to legendary tasks, will end up giving you a small amount of diamonds, which will make up for about 150 every single week, slightly uh, more if you count the shards as well. But you can get about 150 each week off your guild if they are going far enough with their tasks. Other ways to obtain them is mainly, as I mentioned earlier, the dungeons. Every single day you can obtain about uh, 20 or exactly 20 plus some shards from uh, doing out the standard three battles. And then you could uh, gain a additional 20 if you throw down 50 uh, gems for the diamonds. Though on Sundays, there is a higher amount of diamonds, being able to accumulate as much as uh, 70 diamonds on all three of the standard battles, and an additional 80 by spending 50 gems for the 80 diamonds. This you should generally always be doing, as you get a good majority of your value back just from the two gem keys as well as the Celestial Trait Stone, so you're putting in very little to be able to get the 80 diamonds. So always on Sundays, really good value to go throw the 50 gems for this for the 80 diamonds if you have it as a spare, since it will help speed along being able to actually craft stuff. So as far as what you actually do to craft them, you of course go over to Soul Forge and then you go under to Troops. You will need to make sure you have your Soul Forge level just by simply getting kills, which you accumulate. And once you have to 9, you can craft Legends. And once you have it to 10, you can craft Mythics. And once you get this fully leveled, it will stay fully leveled forever, so you don't need to worry about it anymore. So as far as the actual troops, if we scroll all the way down here, every single week there will be four different legends and four different mythics. These go on rotation so that every single one in the game will go into uh, the Soul Forge before another one will go for a second time. And as far as what is actually worth craftable, uh, let's see. Well, first let's go over the cost. Of course, a legendary, it costs uh, 800 diamonds, 5,000 souls, four celestials. The main thing, of course, being the diamond. And with mythics, it is basically the same thing, just about five times as much. It is uh, 4,000 diamonds, which is the main thing that you would need to actually craft them, 20,000 souls, and 10 celestials. So let's go over the legendaries first. Uh, legendaries, you don't really want to go for too much. You'll... Um, You'll have way you'll have every single legend in the game way before you have every single mythic. So to keep that in mind, you won't really be needing legends unless you just desperately want it. But let me go over the top five as far as which ones are to craft. So first up, we have the Dragon Soul. Dragon Soul is pretty much the only one I would say is always worth crafting if you can get it. So it's only 800 diamonds, ends up doing a few explosions, and then deals damage to all enemies. This is by default at least 11, regardless of what your stats are, and can be as high as 20 if your entire team is dragon, regardless at what point in the game you get it. Obviously, 20 damage to all enemies is ridiculously high, particularly earlier on in the game and is the best overall troop when you're first starting out in the game it also gains 15 souls every single cast so you'll be hitting max souls basically every single game all you have to do is cast it three times and even if you only cast it twice it is reaching very close to max capacity and of course you'll get some explosions uh earlier on in the game this will be more towards five six or seven since it's based on his magic but still it'll be enough to clear out the board get a lot of mana and for only 16 mana costs it is insanely good value next one that would be worth crafting is the divinia so divinia uh, slightly recent, it is one of the best mana drain immune troops in the entire game. Other than that, it is one of the best support troops in the entire game. It can do a random positive status effect onto your allies once it is fully traded, and this can be absolutely any of them in the game, barrier, enchant, anything. Uh, so it is very, very good for just stacking up many, many effects onto your team. Other than that, it acts very similar to that of a Herdmaster, except even better. It explodes all red gems and then cleanses all allies. That alone is already pretty good, but on top of that, it gives all allies life, including itself, making your entire team much tankier, and you can just keep stacking life over and over again to essentially never die. And it does all that for only 15 mana costs and is just insanely good overall. Another one that is pretty good that is immune to uh, mana drain that is used for quite a few things is Yagwe, uh, particularly on red Guild War Day, but it's also currently best in slot 
spot for Bounty Hunter if you're going to be doing Bounty Hunter. Uh, using it with a uh, Feral Hound makes it basically the best combination they can possibly do with only four troops, three Bounty Troops with a Yagwe, essentially. It deals a high amount of damage to the first two enemies, even steals some of their magic, meaning that not only do you reduce their magic, but you get to keep it for yourself. And that even applies before it's cast, so you actually get that eight automatically onto your ability. And other than that, it also transforms all purple to red, so you get his mana right back. That red goes right into his mana, and he, of course, has immune to mana drain. And not only that, but he keeps stealing more and more life, which is also what his ability boost ratio is off of. And you can also use this with a Divinia if you were to have crafted prior. Other than that, there is Gorgotha. Gorgotha is the tankiest troop in the game as far as what is realistically used. There are technically some troops that are tankier than it, but overall, as far as how useful it is, this tends to be the most common one used. It explodes a bunch of gems on the board, generally the entire board, once you reach later in the game, and it also cleanses itself so you can get rid of stun and other bad stats effects from it. The main reason it's normally used is it has a 75% scroll reduction, which is the second highest in the game, only behind one Mythic, which has an 80% reduction, though that Mythic is generally not used, the Stonehammer, mainly because his ability itself and his mana cost just isn't worth it compared to that of a Gorgotha. So Gorgotha tends to be used as the best tank in the game. And lastly, something else that's pretty good to pick up as one of your early game legends if you're going to be going for it, is a Tesla. A main thing that makes Tesla really good is it's boosted based on all armor, not uh, only your own, but also all the enemy. It is very commonly used in a double Dwarven Gate, Valkyrie, and then Tesla all the way in the back. There are a few other instances where you can kind of use that team with other stuff, but Tesla works the absolute best for it and can essentially take out any single team in the game. The only thing it's particularly bad against is Barrier and Submerge. So let's move on to now the Mythics that you'd want to craft. Uh, first off, of course, is Infernus. At this current moment in time, Infernus is the absolute strongest troop in the game, capable of doing excessively large amounts of damage. It's done in waves of damage, so you don't need to worry about things like Submerge. You also don't really need to worry as much about things like Barrier, since you're always going to be doing at least some amount of damage to it. And other than that, it also ends up getting five explosions, so you're still gaining some of your mana back. That also synergizes really well with the fact that he has a storm. He ends up creating a firestorm whenever an enemy dies, and of course, when there is a storm active, explosions have an even better chance of being able to land their extra turn. And on top of all that, if that wasn't already enough, he has the best uh, burn in the entire game, being able to burn the entire enemy team just by taking a simple extra turn, and that's essentially 12 free damage per turn, assuming that everything on the opposing team can be burned. So even if nothing is occurring, you're still doing 12 damage per turn, which is insanely high to be doing just out of nowhere. Other than that, next one that you'd probably want to craft is a Farish Ra. This troop, as far as in PvP and such, isn't really the greatest. Main reason why this troop is so good is it has the highest soul gain in the entire game at 150% soul bonus. This soul bonus does stack, so if you were to have two Farish Ra's or three Farish Ra's and as such, it does stack with itself, and it does stack with things like Necromancer, which also have 50%, and it of course also stacks with things like Celestial Armor and other bonuses that you may have within the game. So a lot of souls that you can end up getting by using a single Farish Ra, either in your PvP team or simply just in general soul farming teams. Other than that, it transforms all yellows to purple, which goes into its own mana, similar to like what a Yagwe does, and then it deals a high concentrated amount of damage to a single target, and this is boosted based on how many souls he has, doing one damage per soul. This can be uh, up to a lot of damage, just simply having him with no other troop can already cap out 100 additional damage, meaning we could hit about 120 just by having our souls capped out with this. And having multiple, you could easily hit into the hundreds, uh, somewhere around 200 or 300 per shot, which is essentially one shot anything in the entire game uh, once you get to that point, which is always pretty nice. Another nice thing about him is with two casts, you can reach max capacity of souls. Though do keep in mind, if you ever do use him in a team, you generally want to be using at least one other thing capable of obtaining souls so that you can do that mana generator or whatever it is and then have your boosted amount of damage already without having to waste an entire Farish Rock cast, which will basically do nothing since you don't have any souls uh, yet. Next up, of course, is Ubastet. Uh, technically, Ubastet is stronger than a Farish Ra, though it is used in less instances since it can't be used for soul farming, though it is pretty good for PvP and gold farming. It deals damage to the two weakest enemies, and that's boosted based on all ally and enemy attack, kind of like a Tesla, except way better for uh, late game, and it has that at a 4 to 1 boost ratio, so every 4 attack you're basically gaining 1 additional uh, damage onto him. What makes him really, really good against a lot of stuff is if he gets a single kill, he gets to automatically kill uh, both of them, which ends up doing a lot of extra damage. So as long as you can secure one kill, the other one will instantly go down. Even if they have barrier, it'll still end up doing it. If they both have barrier, it won't. But if the weaker one doesn't have barrier, but the stronger one does, since it does it in two waves of damage, one being the initial damage and then the second one being the instant kill, it will end up killing it out. One other nice feature about this troop, which is currently only to this troop, uh, is if it does its instant kill, 
and ends up killing, let's say, the first two slots and one of those two resummon, it will also instantly re-kill the summon. So it could potentially kill three or four things simultaneously in one single cast. So it has a lot of value that it could potentially get. Other than that, it also has a very similar thing to that of Infernus and in that it gets a Firestorm whenever an enemy dies, which it will be doing a lot. And other than that, if Rashkas ever become useful or for a class ever gets added to it, it also gives one attack and one magic to all Rashkas per turn. This aspect of him is normally pretty useless, though he is a Rashka himself, so he does end up gaining that benefit for himself, if nothing else. Next up is World Breaker, highest mana cost in the game, or at least tied at highest mana cost. Though despite this, he is still one of the better troops. He ends up doing a static amount of 18 explosions, so even if he's webbed or anything else like that, or if you're just starting out in the game, he still does Gorgotha level uh, amounts of explosions, so really nice in that regard. Other than that, he does damage to all enemies, and this is pretty loopable. Even though it's a ridiculously high mana cost, it does cover three man uh, manas, and you're accumulating most of your mana back every single time that you cast it. It is extremely bad against anything that has mana drain, but aside from that, assuming they don't, it tends to be really good. It's also a pretty big staple of dragon teams, and almost all four times dragon teams will end up using it, assuming that you uh, actually have them as a troop. And lastly, as far as the top five really to go in craft, next one would end up being Famine. Famine is something that's not necessarily the quickest at winning, but it's a really good disable. Very few things have immune to mana drain in this game, and Famine is currently the best thing at actually mana draining your enemies. It ends up draining all enemies' mana, and then does a really high concentrated amount of damage to a single target, normally to the point of being able to one-shot it, assuming that you have uh, enough boost ratio off of how much you drained. So if you end up draining 40 mana, you're going to be getting uh, 80 additional damage to the point where you're almost going to be able to one-shot or one-shot your enemies, which works out really well. As far as some other few things that are worth mentioning, as far as uh, mythics are concerned. Uh, Elema Grimm, really good in that it has a high amount of attack reduction that you keep spamming onto the enemy team. It's uh, one of the best troops in the game actually for reducing down enemies attacks. It also has impervious and overall is actually the best impervious currently within the game. It has a high concentration of damage to all enemies and can even infinitely loop. It's also really good with another thing that's really strong right now which is Infernus in the fact that it boosts uh, how many purples it spawns based on how many enemies are burned. Obviously if you just go and take one extra turn you'll get Infernus to burn all the enemies and that's potentially 12 purple that you can spawn per turn. And not only does Elema Grimm use all that purple but also Infernus uses all that purple so you can just keep using this and using furnace to clean up whatever's left so really good combination with that and is also good independently either in a dragon team or on guild war days like on a purple guild war day other than that there is catch the bull he is very similar to that of a uh Ubistet, except that he starts getting weaker or stronger based on how many stats he has generally weaker unless you're actually putting something onto the team that will help get you higher stats but it deals a high amount of damage to a single enemy and then there's adjacent damages to them uh and it has a boost ratio based on how much attack life and armor it has obviously if those stats are getting lower then he'll be doing less damage though if you have something on your team that buffs those stats let's say like a divinia constantly giving you hp then those uh, damage that he's going to be doing will be increasing and also does half to the adjacents, which makes it very similar to that of Infernus. So it's basically a combination between the two of them. The only real big downside it has is unlike uh, either of them, it does not have any kind of board control, kind of like what an Ubistet is. But as far as how you use it, you generally throw it onto second slot, and you throw it onto uh, third slot or fourth slot, and then you basically just take out the entire team by half damaging the adjacents. You can also use this in combination with things like Infernus and just use the Infernus, see where that lands, then throw the Ketris in there. And there's a lot of little pokes that you can do where you can basically double or triple kill with this, which will basically be exactly like what a uh, Ubistek can do. It just has the liability of if you're starting to lose the battle and you only have something like uh, 10 HP, let's say, well, you're not going to be doing as much damage and it's going to be harder to make a comeback. Whereas a Ubistet with 10 HP could still easily make a uh, comeback into your battle. Other than that Queen Aurora. Queen Aurora tends to be pretty good on Guild War days as well as just beast teams and is generally just really tanky. It gives all other allies a barrier and a bunch of life and then creates 10 gems allowing it to loop some and other than that it also has plus one mana link to every single color for so it's basically having six links all at once one of course for every single color which allows the mana accumulation of any team to be increased by quite a bit it's really good on teams that don't automatically start with half mana and stuff like that things that you might want to use like damage or something where currently they don't have a 50 percent start but you could easily give them their mana a lot quicker by simply throwing a queen aurora it's also used very heavily on several of the guild war days other than that there are other uh, ones that are also tends to be used specifically for Guild War Days that may be worth eventually crafting. Amnesia occasionally gets used for Yellow Guild War Day because it has a lot of stuff that works good for, a lot of explosions, it has summons, and it helps with daemons if you're using something like a Grugolfa. There's things like Yasmin, which tends to be used on Green Guild War Day exclusively, mainly because it has a lot of Entangle, a lot of green spam. You can basically just keep looping into more and more green and just win out Alpha of Infinite Green Spam. 
Uh, there's things like Champion of Anu, which ends up giving plus one stats to all blues and other similar ones like this. There's also Scorpius, which gives plus one to all browns and stuff like that. And basically they just work very good on their specific color Guild War Day. And you would get them eventually specifically for that purpose if you did want that. Uh, Skyla ends up doing the, or not Skyla, but um, Skady ends up doing the same thing for Blue Day in that it also creates a perpetual uh, blue storm uh, on a uh, Guild War Day, or on the blue Guild War Day. Uh, what's her name again? Skyla, or Skady. <laughs> Skady, where are you? Skady, there she is. But yeah, things like this, where you constantly get a perpetual storm of that day, these tend to work really good on that specific Guild War day. Similarly, there's things like Dark Storm and Alpha Umber Wolf, which are also pretty good if you want to get this under, let's say, like a legend, and you just want to get yourself a bunch of uh, constant mana for that Guild War day. But anyways, that's pretty much everything as far as what you would bother going out of your way to craft. If you still have any questions about it, feel free to leave it in the comments section below. Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.